I grew up in Fayetteville, North Carolina, about 11 miles from Fort Bragg, North Carolina, in a segregated town and a segregated high school of about 500 kids. I played athletics at E. Smith High School. I was a three-sport athlete there. Back when I was coming along, between elementary school and high school, there was no football. So I uh, prided myself on being a good basketball player. I thought that was the direction I was gonna go. And then when I went to high school, I played basketball and football and baseball. It was an all-star game, uh, a shrine game that for the black players in North Carolina called the East-West Shrine game. And I was the most valuable player in that game. And the most valuable player trophy uh, awarded was uh, given by Cal Stoll, an assistant coach at Michigan State. While I was a quarterback, and during, during the time that I came up, there was no future for Blacks playing quarterback. So I played it because it was in season and I just happened to be good at it, uh, good enough to be noticed by Cal Stoll. That was my first contact with Michigan State. Uh, and they recruited me as a quarterback and never made mention of the fact that I wouldn't be a quarterback and I, I rode the way all the way to East Lansing. Fortunately for me, uh, during that time, freshmen wasn't eligible. So it gave me a chance because I'd never been around white people before, never had white teammates or white instructors or professors. Uh, so it was a learning curve that I had to adjust to and the fact that freshmen wasn't eligible and didn't play any games, just practice that helped make that transition easier. I realized when Ebony Magazine came out to do an article on me, that I was the only black quarterback at a major university in the country. But the gravity of that when I was playing wasn't something that I, that I dwelled on or that I thought about. I was just playing ball. And even though it was in the heights of the civil rights movement, my family inside of uh, the university, the football family, was what I concentrated on. He, he took me and nurtured me. He made a big step, a courageous step, to play me at quarterback. I'd be forever indebted for him for that. But he told me it wasn't gonna be easy. Uh, I couldn't be as good as the other players. I had to clearly be better. So there was no question in, my, in anybody's mind and that he would handle the outside crowd, as he called it. He, he kept the negative letters and the, the name calling incidents away from me as much as he could and he endured the, the, the negative stuff. You do what you have to do. My dad told me when I left coming here, you made that decision. Don't worry about the horse being blind, just load the wagon. I just kept sawing wood. I had enough ability that that would take care of it. That, that would speak for itself. It was just a matter of opportunity. After looking at that form, throwing the ball, uh, <laughs> I really do like to thank you for selecting me. <laughs> it's a tremendous honor I'm beholden to my parents for having the trust and the faith in Jeffrey Daugherty and Michigan State during a very turbulent time in this country to allow me the opportunity to come and to get an education and to play athletics. As I think back on all of that, I could never imagine that one day I would be entering the Hall of Athletics at Michigan State University. I'm deeply humble and very appreciative of the vision of Duffy Doherty and President John Hanna for giving Blacks in the segregated South an opportunity at it for an education 
and to play athletics at a major level, words could not convey how, how deeply um, and how deeply my gratitude goes for them and giving me the opportunity that ended up here. You know, if you've ever read the book uh, *Ray of Light*, uh, you you very quickly recognize the uh, the impact he's had not just on Michigan State but on college football in general. You know, coming from the South, you know, sort of crossing a lot of barriers uh, to become uh, the first African American quarterback to win a national championship. And I think he was one of the true pioneers of college football. And if that's that's what he really means, you know, when you look at him, he was a quarterback, he was a leader. As a player here. I think he crossed a lot of um, thresholds and was a significant figure in Michigan State's history. Duffy used to tell us all the time when I was here that if we took care of the things off the field and on the field that we were supposed to, that our names would be written in indelible ink, that it can't be erased or you can't wash it away and, and we have endured. Michigan State is, is everything to me. It's, it's my life. Uh, it's been my life for 50 plus years. I'll, I'll be forever indebted to Michigan State for allowing me to have the opportunity to play here and and be a part of this university and the university structure. And uh, I believe in. Really.